Gaming and BS, episode 328, being recorded Monday, February 8th, 2021. Welcome to Gaming and BS Tabletop RPG Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Sean. And I'm Brett, the other guy. Again, I'm still here. We're here. We're all here. How are you? Feeling good? That's great. <laughs> Fred, how are you, man? Not bad. I am, uh, I'm healing quite well, so that's nice. Yeah. I started back at work today, easing into it, and uh, by noon, I'm like, man, I am cashed. I need a nap, <laughs> which is really weird. Um. I didn't realize how long it would take for my body to really heal. When the doctor says, well, 11, 12 weeks, then we can start lifting restrictions. Like, ah, that's for other people. No way. I can't have 12 weeks. I'm like, holy fuck. Halfway through the day, I'm like, I need a nap. Done. I got nothing left in the tank. So I had to check out and just crash. It's just, it's weird. And I don't like not being able to lift things. I'm not even like a big, you know, heavy power lifter guy. I just want to be able to hang a sheet of drywall. In my new basement, I want to be able to pound a nail. Can't do that. Can't do this. Ugh, it's fucking annoying. Super annoying. But other than that, chronic pain, 90% gone at least. So uh, so it was. it's worth it. Just a slow recovery. Sean, how the hell are you? You uh, you brave in the cold with the pups and all that? My dogs hate the cold, but they're doing okay. They're doing okay, actually. Mine are all right. I just had one that had eight teeth pulled, so Eesh. she's under the weather. Yeah, upstairs recovering, but uh, the the outside hasn't been too bad. Well, that's good. Yeah, but uh, getting any gaming in? When's uh, have you gamed yet? Since the big knife cut? N- yeah, last Tuesday I had a chance to um, alpha ran uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, so the Undermountain campaign. We got back into that. We almost died, like a complete total party kill. We got way over our skis and another drow encounter. We're like, oh, we got this. Oh, we're doing great. Ah, oh, one, one more room. How bad could this be? Motherfucker. It was bad. It was not good. Yeah, Nick Nick lost another character. The rest of us fled. So we'll see. We'll see if we make it out alive. <laughs> My buddy Lenny and I have come up with, a, uh, with an approach that will help us kind of improve our... Uh, basically give us a reason and some other stuff that we've we feel we've been lacking a little bit in, in the game not due to alpha per se it's just kind of the, the setup we're like look at this point we are lost our, our maps are no good we've hopped through a couple portals we've skipped and bumped around we're like look this is our life now we are under mountain people we will never leave this god awful dungeon let's just let's start a mercenary company let's just start figuring out how to live down here because we're never going to get out Based on how we bounced around and where, I have no clue where we are right now. Not an idea. Not even an inkling of an idea of a clue. This is our life now. Let's just, let's get used to that. Let's just Stockholm Syndrome this whole goddamn dungeon and move on. So that's what we're, that's how we're approaching it now. How have you, how'd you do, man? Did you get any Forbidden Lands? Did that happen finally? I did session zero. No, oh, how'd that go? It went well. Um, oh, he said, uh, in convincing <laughs> tone. The, um, yeah. No, it went, I thought it went really well. I, um. I I presented what I needed to, I think, and then they came up with characters and they're loaded up and ready to go. Um, the guys seem excited to start off, and they they didn't all suddenly have somewhere else they had to be urgently and had to drop from your game. So that's <laughs> that, good. That's all take, good. That takes more in session zero to do. I, I'm expecting that maybe around maybe two or three. Yeah, halfway through yeah. session. Yeah, yeah. Wait, once they've kind of. Realize, like, is this really how it's going to go? So are you grokking how it's going to go? Are the people excited about it? Like, They are. And uh, like I said, it's still, it's still a lot different than anything that I've ever run before. I mean, again, I could still run Raven's Purge, which I haven't decided <coughs> to do, um, which is this fine piece of, of work right here. But I don't um, – it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I just have to get – I have to just get into the fact that – small little things mm-hmm. are okay. Like, I don't have to have this weird plot you don't, device. You, you, do, you do not have mastery. You don't have to have a huge, no. deep, blah, blah, blah. This is a dive into it. Yeah. Right? How fine. this going to work? And I think one of the things, you and I talked about this off the mics last time, was I think one of the beautiful things you have going into a new game like this, which is one of the reasons why I want Simba Room, which I believe is how it's properly pronounced. I want to get into Simba Room because... I want to try a whole new system, different approach. 
and my crew, somebody, you're laughing at me. Did I say it wrong again? No, no, I'm, I'm looking at nothing. AWOL is just right. like, just let yourself be free, man. <laughs> <laughs> say what I want, <laughs> God damn it. Just be free. Anyhow, I think it'll be, it'll be, uh, where am I going? Oh, to do to run a new game like that, I have no D&D baggage, as we've talked about before. So there's no need to, like, Brett GM over the top of this thing. Like, hey, let's just run it. Rules is written, man. Let's see how it goes. Because that's really what I do with most brand new game systems, except for D and D, as we've previously discussed on other episodes. That for some reason that gorilla just is what it is. But I think uh, I think you might find that if you have a really good time with it, I'm honestly I'm watching to see how impressed you are with with Forbidden Lands because I may buy it if, if you really like it. <laughs> well, and it's a again we mentioned this. I streamed Saturday for a little while, went over it, and. Uh, you know, it is just a different type of game, period. And there are some fiddly, noodly bits that you got to kind of understand where in D&D, I mean, even even low fantasy gaming, I played with Hobbs on Sunday and we, you know, did well and we were going into a site and, you know, we crawled down some stairs and we ran into some beasties and had some combat and that's all well and good. But like the travel to get there isn't, something that he's it's it's not it's part of the game but it's not mechanized like it is forbidden lands like it is serious man there are roles like you are pathfinder and you are scout give me these two roles and no there's some there's some cool things i think that go yeah. with that because <clears throat> whoever's in those lead spots whatever it is the spotlight mechanically the spotlight goes your turn sean brett's turn a wall's turn mm -hmm. vc's turn eileen's turn and that, to me, from the way you've described it, it's just going to go around the table, back and forth, if you will, and say, your turn, your turn, your turn. How did this work? What happens with the, with with your role plus yours plus yours plus yours? A little bit different. I like it. Yeah. So I, I am excited about it. I'm very uh, interested to see how it goes. And I think it's going to be a fun time. My my The reason I say that, my only reservation, but probably like letting these guys like, oh, man, the more he talks about this, I don't know about this guy. I don't want to play anymore. Uh, is, is that if I don't feel comfortable with having something in my brain when I come to the table, it throws me personally off. And I've run games where I've been off, and that sucks to me. So... That's the only thing. Like the Star Wars Age of Rebellion game I had a couple weeks ago, everything was kind of fun up until a point, and then it, and then it, well, it didn't get bad. It was just, all right, I'm struggling to come up with something that I need to do and throw at these guys and, and make things either move along or what. So I just have to have a couple things in my pocket. So if I run into that, and you I, don't have, and you don't have the familiarity with right. Forbidden Lands, where in Star Wars you could say, "Fucking um, uh, a droid explodes, move on." I know what that is. I, if it was D and D, orcs attack, ninjas invade. You know what are what's the orcs attack for Forbidden Lands? Right? What is that? Right. You, don't, you right. don't know that yet because you haven't cut your teeth in that space yet. But you've got a good crew of uh, gamers with you, so you'll figure it out. I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm I'm I'm, I'm just I, and I I got a Star Wars game to prepare for, and I wish I was I. You know, Saul's Widow's like, hey, man, we gonna, what's up with the Star Wars game? And, you know, I'm supposed to play that every other week. And then I've yep. got this week to play Star Wars. And I am like zero prepared. And that's another game that I have to kind of nip in the bud and see because I'm reconsidering how I'm running that. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I, you know what, man? So speaking of, I think the last thing we can talk about here and then go random is um, I want to, <clears throat> in March, after I have, depending, after I got a couple more weeks of just healing up or whatever, I want to get a game going. Even if it's like, look, I'm going to run a short campaign, might be two, three sessions every week, every other week. I'm going to pick a day, I'm going to pick a time, you know, throw out, throw it out to BSers and see who can get in. Um, and then we'll just try, do something. Even if it's even if it's just like, hey, I want to try this game. I have an uh, Avalon adventure I want to run. Let's do that. It's a standard for me. We can crank that out and have a good time. And not have it be just a one shot when I... Um, when I ran for BSers last time, I think one of the cool things that you're doing, Sean, which I didn't do when I ran before um, my Avalon game uh, for the BSers, and it was, um, everyone said, oh, that was a lot of fun. And to a gamer, they all said, oh, if you want to continue this, I'd be happy to play that character again, which was great feedback. It was like, wow, you really did like it. I did a good job. You all had fun. Awesome. That feels good. But I thought to myself, you know, that was kind of kind of dumb on my part to kind of box myself in saying this is only one go where if it is going well 
build myself to a, a two, three session and say, okay, and start off there saying, look, we're going to start off here. We could go half dozen sessions. We could go four. Don't know, but it will at least be two. Who's in? And then we can roll with it from there. So my hope is um, by middle of March, I can get something rolling as long as I can stay awake for the whole thing. <laughs> if you guys aren't following Brett on Twitter or Instagram or something, you should. Um, maybe we'll put Brett's the, some of those in the um, links below. But, um, you know, he's he's made some major purchases for his Rhyme of the Frostmaid game, which we all know he went in on with the Beetle and Grim piece. Yeah. Now he's got huge, two huge dragons. Oh, yeah. That are like Jimungus that he's showing everybody okay. right now. Oh, I love that one. Um, so Brett, Brett's fixing to run a a thousand dollar plus D D <laughs> game for his buddies. So, well, the cool. <laughs> I, <laughs> eh, you don't have to do that. Now, now I feel bad about my spending. Yeah, but Man, um, it shouldn't feel bad about spending money on shit. Especially, I mean, hey, there's. Brett, you and I, I always, at least I've used it with my wife. Like, hey, I could be at the bar every night spending, oh, totally. you know, a yeah, few hundred Susan, bucks a week. Susan, Susan knows so, that. Yeah. <laughs> and my other thing is I live in the town where my home group is now. I don't have to drive. Right. I do this every week. And yeah. she's like, fine, fine. Wow, yeah. But I got, I, got, I, got, I got a table. I got I got new gaming. I got a new gaming table, chairs, other shit that's got to go in the new game room in the basement. So, Sean, so... You, you, you good at hanging drywall? You want to lend a hand? A little drywall hanging? Just a couple of sheets. Come on. See, you don't want Come this on. old guy doing that shit, man. Fuck. It'll take him twice as much. And Yeah, but I can't lift anything. You have no idea how you're taking it. Hey, you got a youngster, man. He's got to get some friends. Have he's, him, have him make some friends quick. And He's 14 and weighs like a buck 10 soaking wet and holding the brick. Hey, you know, he's, gonna, uh, he's probably uh, still hardier than I am. Yeah, it's true. All right. Anyway, let's move off of this. Right, and talk. Yeah, let's let's go. Ran- let's talk random encounter. Let's talk something interesting besides <laughs> my sons need to work random out. encounter segment of the show where we field emails, voicemails, comments from social media. You start, man. The warden comments. Todd Kreper. Uh There are typically he's De- on deploying lore. They are. They are. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There are typically two approaches I like to use when it comes to providing setting lore. Do. Don't. <laughs> but, but, but when I do, I try two approaches. The first is to frame the first uh, or only adventure as a pilot episode. What are the key elements that need to come across in the story if this were picked up as a series slash uh, as a series slash became a regular campaign? As I'm reading through my old Earth Dawn books, I've started making taking mental notes on those key elements that can be explained or at least introduced into that first adventure. Right now, they include the continent of a bear, bar save as the home setting, a land home to both the dwarves of Thrall and the dastardly Theron Empire that's used to rule over the people with an iron fist. The horrors, evil creatures from the astral plane that invaded the world in an ap- apocalyptic invasion of Cthulian monstrosities. This event was known as the Scourge. To survive the Scourge, people hid in magical underground bunkers known as Cares for hundreds of years until the horrors returned to the astral plane. During the Scourge, the Theron Empire was cut off from their holds in Barsave, and the dwarves exploited this to plant the seeds of rebellion against the land's oppressors. Everything else is on a need-to-know as they come up basis. You don't need to know much about windlings, scrying, scrang, trolls, or blood elves until someone wants to play one or the party meets one. So my first adventure needs to revolve around these four elements. Right now, I'm toying with a party of heroes hired to help find a still-sealed care before the Therans do, only to find out a horror breached it years ago and now seeks fresh blood. Hero blood. Yummy. <laughs> the second approach involves what I call introductions, and it's something I developed for High Plane Samurai. So Todd does High Plane Samurai. Broken Ruler uh, Games. Broken Ruler Games. Oh, and Todd is also uh, in the uh, hip pocket of the uh, Pip System guru, right? He so is. he's an Eloy La Santa dude, and it's, it's actually the warden's fault that I'm converting Avalon to Pip, but that's a different story. Carry on. Third Eye Games. Aside from the key setting elements, 
essential to making this setting stand out from others. Nothing is written in stone until it is introduced into the story. By that I mean somebody said something at the table to address, define, or otherwise introduce it into the table's lore. It's an open-ended approach that can also default to the game master's favor if their table only allows the GM to represent the setting. For mine, I like to let everyone contribute, so long as what's introduced doesn't contradict something from before. It's now part of the lore. What results are some of those finer bits of setting you normally only find in novels based on those settings because they view the world through a group of characters' eyes, not as an encyclopedia of general facts. Good point. One, one table's Faroon need not be the same as another's when you get up close and personal with it. It's a concept in campaign settings I like to call the multiverse application. Each table is an alternate universe based on shared threads provided in the books of that setting. From there, each table branches off in their own direction to create a multiverse of that one setting. Think about it. Somewhere out there, someone's killed Strahd. What? Yep. No. Someone's brought water to Athos. Someone made Spelljammer fun. Okay, no. <laughs> oh, no. wow. I, mean, oh, yeah, I, draw, I draw the line right there. Wham! Damn. Sorry, sorry Spelljammer lovers. That was a blow the belt shot there. That was, <laughs> Warden, that was sneaky but yeah, good. Sneaky I like but how you snuck on. that in there. You just got it right in there. Carry Each on, carry on. one is a version of the setting where troll horns are hollow. Elves don't like to be naked. Dwarves can't stop being naked. And dragons rule over the elemental plains in a bid to make big profits from mining on the plane of Earth. Each one provides its own lore created at the table that will never be replicated elsewhere. It's mathematically impossible just factoring in the dice rolls alone. So let's all just say fuck it and send Thanos to the demi-plane of dread. It's possible I got off topic here. <laughs> Todd. Well, Todd, one of the things that you're talking about here is, Sean, I've mentioned this before, and I think it absolutely bears repeating, is the, the truths at the table, right? And the things that come up there it can be just amazing. One of the things that I admire about my buddy Lenny, and I've started doing it more myself, is he will say something in character like, oh, that's what elves do. Yeah, everyone knows that. He's wrong. And someone else will look at him, and they'll know the setting or no data, and they'll look at him and go, but not. He goes, my character said it. That's what he thinks. And usually the rest of us go, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Let's go with it. So in my buddy um, Nick's Conan game, I know more about, well, frankly, I think I know more about the Conan world than he does, which is totally fine. So he asks me questions, I prop him up or whatever, and I will periodically say things that I know are grandiose statements. My character's this lower master kind of guy. And the rest of the group will stop, look at me, look at Nick, and Nick's like, that's what he's telling you. You can believe him or disbelieve him as you see fit. But he's the guy you know who knows the most about everything. So Zave goes, yeah, I, I'll, I buy it. That makes sense to me. <laughs> I know for a fact I'm probably wrong about a few things. Does it matter, though? Because at the table right now, the group believes this is how the Emperor of, uh, the the Charons failed. This is where Python and the Purple Towers, they, they like, oh, well, that's, that's neat. Cool. How do we know that? Well, that's the best info we have. <laughs> and probably at another gaming table, it wouldn't work that way. It absolutely wouldn't work that way. It, it's, But it is a blast when you do it. And the information that's landing on the table at the time in the game is where everybody's like, that is how it works. Even if it doesn't really work that way, everybody believes, everyone at the table believes it's how it works until they find out otherwise. And then they all act accordingly. That's the wonderful part. When Sean's character says, hey, you know, all dwarves eat stones. Okay, dwarves eat stones. We don't know any different. Never met a dwarf before. First dwarf we meet, we hand him some precious pebbles that we think he might want to eat. You know, and he politely sets them aside and says, I'm not hungry. He just doesn't know what to do with these weirdos. It just doesn't stop us from believing towards these stones, right? Anyway, that type of crap is just fun, and I love it. That's That kind of lore building on the fly, even if it's wrong, doesn't matter because it becomes a, a thing of, of that table, and that's where all that stuff lies, so that's pretty cool. Love it. Anything else, Sean? I'm sorry. I totally ran off there. No, um, nope. Thanks All for right. commenting, Todd. <clears throat> Absolutely, man. So, Huskarl comments on deploying lore as well. In my return to game mastering a year and a half ago, I started to develop my homebrew world 
I've written thousands of words. I know that it's only for me, but sometimes it is frustrating that players do not put in more effort or really any effort other than showing up at the table and asking for a pencil and dice. But I digress as, as that's for another episode. Damn right it is. Um, there are things I, I used to introduce and reinforce lower in my games. First is a treasure item I call an, an adventurer's encyclopedia. It's basically 1d4 plus one pages describing monsters and outlining some of their strengths and weaknesses. These are usually about, <clears throat> excuse me, a paragraph or two in length, so they're easy to come up with. It allows for the creative to hack, uh, cre uh, 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 allows for the creativity to hack already developed monsters and create my own, or create my own. Second, are rumors and information that I used to reinforce things that PCs would know and introduce new things. I usually disseminate via NPC in-game, or because I'm a much better writer than a talker in a campaign, Discord post after the gaming session or as part of some downtime. Third, because of remote gaming, I use images and journal notes in Foundry Virtual Tabletop. My landing page is a player map scene with the locations of the places the party already has been and the journal entries accessible to the players. <clears throat> Fourth, I came up with the idea to give my PCs dreams to introduce and reinforce lore. It is work, but writing is enjoyable for me, especially when it, the words flow. I'm writing them from the character's childhood and adolescence so I can include lore from their birthplace to provide some memories. These dream sequences have, have translated well into the campaign, despite the players being well players. I give them dreams after particularly grueling combats or some other trigger like fear or even the thrill of leveling up. Thank you both for your vision and building this fantastic community of like-minded gamers. I value your excellent discussion topics, insight, and knowledge. Happy gaming. Hoos. I like that approach, too, Hoos, <clears throat> Carl. I think the one of the cool things that we're hearing here from a lot of different people talking about how they do lore and some of the discussion in our forums and whatnot is there's a lot of different ways to do it, right? And as Sean and I have said for like the past six years, what he and I think is not the be-all and end-all of what's to be done. <clears throat> so I like this idea. I think you're taking some of the stuff we talked about, Sean, if I recall the conversation, you're like, hey, you're using NPCs or guides and stuff to do that. And I think he's, who's Carl's find a way, a way here to utilize the fact that he's written all this lore and then dribble those facts, those little lore factoids out there into his game um, so that the cool stuff he's creating doesn't get lost, missed, or never really appreciated by anyone other than him. Not only just for the selfish feeling that it's really cool and somebody likes your shit, but also because it helps keep the players in the zone, if you will. So I, I like what he's got there. I think it's pretty smart. What do you yes. think about it, Sean? You like it? Yes. <clears throat> it's good stuff. Yeah, write all this shit down before my next Forbidden Lands game. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I tell you, if if we could take oh, this is be I don't think we could ever pay everybody enough, but to like oh, all the really better advice you folks have come up with and put that in a book. <laughs> this is my retirement fund, man. I'm just <laughs> gathering all this shit, and then I'm yeah. just gonna publish it and take credit for everything and sail off into the sunset. Yeah, that's fine. I'd be good with that. Sell a million copies. Exactly. All right, your turn. Jim Fitzpatrick writes in about episode 326, not so supers. Hey, guys. Haven't bugged you in a while, but something stood out about the past couple episodes I'd love to get your opinion on. Whoa. Two things brought it up. First was DM Kyle's call about not knowing all the lore in a setting, and the second was the not so supers episode about genre and systems we don't play or don't want to play. What I'd like to hear is your take on being a tourist. Hmm. What I mean when I say that is, do you do anything special if you, uh, if you know you're going to play a system or a genre you don't usually play or even have that much exposure to? How do you play a space opera game if you've never seen a space opera show? Good question. How do you play a supers game if you've never read a comic book or seen an MCU movie? Senna and Phil were nice enough to talk about this on Pandas when I asked, but I would love to hear the BS side. A few game holes ago, I got a chance to play a supers game with Matt Forbeck, but I'm not a big consumer of supers media and don't really know much about the tropes. I didn't know the system either and don't remember what it was. I still had fun because Matt is great, but I might not have had fun if it had been with a random game master. Brett, glad you're on the mend. Neck and back pain is not to be effed with. Had enough cortisone shots in my day to know that. Hope you're back in the saddle soon. Enjoying the show as always, Jim. 
That's a damn good question, Sean. That's going to be that's a show topic right there, brother. I think I'll have to add, tack that one in there. I like that. If I had to put my finger on the game that Mr. Forbeck ran, I would mm. have guessed it would be Brave New World. Could because be. I believe Matt wrote that adaptation of the RPG, but I could be wrong. So, I don't know if that rings a bell, Jim. But anyways, that is a very interesting. I uh, I have not been in, uh, well, say, okay, so reading, we've already, we kind of touched on a little bit of this, because we talk about how do you get incentive for running specific games, like, yeah, it, it, or if you're trying to envision something in your brain as a game master to convey to your players, and you're running a Star Wars game, then, you know, and it's an imperial, an imperial it is establishment. Yeah, yeah, establishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gray slate, everything's like, but I like sterile. This, Jim's approach here is like from the player perspective. You sit down, like, look, I want to cut my teeth. I want to try a steampunk game. I want to try a supers game. I don't want to run it. I want to play one at a con. Great opportunity. Brett and Sean said so. Other people said so. Fuck it. Yeah, we're gonna sit down. Four bucks gonna run. Is there an approach we should take as a player? to tourist your way in there appropriately and not stand out like somebody, you know, should you take the most important character there? How do you even know what the most important character there is? Is there a support character? Is there such a thing as, you know, all of those types of questions. I think all that comes out. And um, instead of saying, yeah, I don't know anything about this, except that I heard Matt Forbeck's a good game master, so I want to play. That you could you could set the whole table like oh, oh Christ it's one of those you, you could you can hear the mumbling right so it's a damn good question Jim and uh, I think Sean and I you and I will address that we're gonna have to talk about it you good yes okay I'm thinking not next up we've got a different one to cover but it'll probably be in two episodes from now two episodes two episodes from now all right let's get into the main topic thanks Jim. Yeah, thanks, Jim. That's good stuff. And great to hear from you, man. Yeah. Let's get into the main topic. Absolutely. All right. Main topic, Brett. What are we talking about this week, Brett? Hot burn, slow start, slow start, hot burn, burn yes. hot. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Sizzle. So I've heard these phrases like the hot start. I heard that a lot in the slow burn campaign. And I think they get thrown out a bunch. Um, depending who you're talking to, some people don't give two shits about this type of thing. It's not really something to talk about. Slow but, burn hot start. However, <laughs> I've been thinking about this because Sean's starting Forbidden Lands. I want to do something um, with the BSers again. I want to get my, my groove going there. And then I think about like con games tend to be what? How do I approach them and so on? So let's each one each each of these approaches has pluses and minuses, and there's variations, different degrees of either one. But I think um I when I think about the slow burn is kind of the everyone makes their first level characters using level type of system and you meet in an inn. Um, the blacksmith busts in and says, Kobold stole my child, go rescue them. And it's a slow, get into the action, figure out everything, work your way up, find who the major players are, so on and so forth. Just kind of a um, get to know things, just kind of ease your way into it. It's not, there's action, there's things to do, but the overall plot and the, the major really cool drama components, those are coming. That's down the road. That's book two, right? This is the intro book. Is that how you, when, I th when you hear Slow Burn campaign, is that what you think of, Sean, as well? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so the hot start, I think, in Media Ray, or Res, or however now you want to pronounce it, yeah. um, the in, in the middle of the action, where you have the, okay, everyone roll initiative. What? Everyone roll initiative. Get your characters. Let's go. Oh, what's going on? Where are we? Okay, there's five orcs. There's 16, you know, laser knights. Whatever's going on, 16 orcs and 17 laser knights all at once. They're fighting you. What do you do? Uh, minis are on the table. Action's happening. Sometimes it's that dra dramatic, and sometimes it's like you've just escaped from the laser knights. You're at the end of the corridor. You've barricaded the door. You can hear them working their way through the door. What do you do to get? What are you gonna do? 
that's another form of hot start type of thing. It's you know tension, action, shit's going on right now. Um, lots of different ways to do that, but that hot start is in the middle of something, something kind of big happening already. You've you've cut through some of the earlier stuff, right? I've heard uh, Matt uh, Matt Colville talked about this one time where he started a campaign in the uh, <clears throat> basically at the start of the second level of the dungeon. They had just enough time to escape a horde of lizard men, shut the door, go down the stairs, oh, shut the next door. Second level of dungeons where you started. Holy cow. What was that? You know. <clears throat> so is that when you hear hot start, Sean, do you think the same thing? Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think so. Other than just, you know, a hot start could be, you know, you're put in a cauldron uh, by a few witches and you're starting. <laughs> starting <Yeah. to> feel... <laughs> That's another way you've been captured. Yeah. Yeah, you know some some old school D and D modules start like that. You're captured. You're in prison. What? Yes, you're running for your life. Um, the, that's we talked about that. When we talked about prison break episode, right? Where you could say, okay, you've just escaped. What do you do now? Oh, uh, what? So I have no gear. You have no gear. You're just loincloths and and t-shirts. That's all you got. What do you do? You know. So, <clears throat> Sean, there's benefits. There's I see ups and downs for both, but. Do you have a preference? Let's talk about a preference this kind of first year. Do you, if you're going to run a campaign, um, do you think, well, I want to kind of, I want uh, you like this. Do you have a tendency towards the slow burn or do you like to get a little more action? Some variation of a, of a hot start. I tend to, I tend to go with the slow burn. <laughs> nice. But I really like the hot start if I have a choice. So... Let's take, let me ask you this then. Yes, so sir. if it's a convention game, which yeah. do you do? Which do Ooh. you do? Uh, it, uh, it depends. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Bingo boards. Mark them down, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. It depends on what I'm running, man. If it's, uh, you know, I've run, I've run the Gatsby in the Great Race. That's, mm -hmm. that's a slower burn. There is, however, it gets into crazy shit quick. There was uh, Savage Worlds, uh, forget about it, that is slow burn. And I think with some con games, it doesn't always have to be, many start out with an explanation of what, like, what's going on. Like, okay, here's the deal. I got to set everything. Mm -hmm. Like, who's played, who hasn't played. There's a huge upfront presentation to make. That doesn't mean that the the adventure scenario situation whatever has to start slow burn necessarily because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people like to just all right here's the deal da 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 da, -da. oh and by the way now you're you're in a room and there's roll for initiative like a con game is pretty awesome when the first thing that works out of the game master is roll for, roll for initiative yeah <clears throat> I've done um. I have a tendency myself to do slow burn or an abbreviated, like a slightly sure. a medium burn. <laughs> so <clears throat> when I run Avalon at convention games, what I do is the characters, they pick their characters. I'm like, okay, you know each other. Who's who? Good. Okay. Great. So Jim, when he was playing Toad, uh, Jim Fitzpatrick, hearkening back to him. So when he was playing Toad in one of my games, what are you doing? What, what do you do this morning? I get up, we're going to breakfast. Get it. Okay, cool. Great. That's what you're doing. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <clears throat> Start innocuously slow. And then something crazy ass happens and they all get engaged in a problem. And then they got to go solve it. But I have a tendency <clears throat> to start off with that. Like, what's going on? What's your day to day? What are you doing? What are you going to be about today? So that way, whatever I hit you with to interrupt your day, right, is noteworthy. <clears throat> oh, you're going about this thing. And then everyone ha just so happens to show up at the end or there's a noise across the street. You hear it. They hear it. Everyone comes to investigate because it's a con game. Good players. Jim and the rest of the crew are not going to fuck about. They're going to show up and play, right? I think Eileen was actually in that one, too. It was, it was pretty cool. Anyway, point is, is <clears throat> I find for whatever reason, that's my go-to. I have a hard time, and I don't think I have ever honestly done a real hot start ever. Like the hottest of hot starts. Yeah, like roll for initiative. I've never Yours done that. has been kind of warm. Warm, yeah, kind of at uh, best. Yeah, at best. I, I don't. I don't go like microwave and then come. It comes out hot pocket burning. You know, <laughs> like scald your mouth. Hot pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done that, but I have. 
I have done the Connor and his buddy, my oldest son, when when uh, before he when he was home visiting last time when he got, was <laughs> when the Air Force actually let him have leave. Um, He's home. He wanted to game with his buddy and AJ. So I'm like, okay, they made some characters. They came back. He said, okay, you guys are in prison and this is what's going on. And they got kind of got a preamble out of me, but that wasn't like roll for initiative. You know, that <clears throat> I, I have not done that. And there's a piece of me. I was like, man, why am I, am I afraid of it? Is there a reason why I'm not doing it? Because I, the benefits for me in a slower burn or an easier start is everyone get ever Brett more probably the players are probably a lot more malleable like hey let's go let's go they're more sure. malleable than me this way but I'm like okay let's just ease into this we get to know each other a little bit and let's go because through that little preamble dialogue like what do you do this morning toad what do you do over there Eileen what's your character's name again oh yes what is she doing what's he doing what are they doing great they're gonna do this she's doing that he's doing that and now it just gives us this chance to talk through things. And I think it's people appreciate it, but it can't last too long, you know, and it makes me wonder, especially for con games, going with that hot start, like roll for initiative. How fun would that be? Because fuck it. It's a con game, right? Ride that character like you stole it. If he dies, he dies. Just move on. Brett, I'm going to challenge you. <clears throat> yeah, go for it. Let, I'm going to ch challenge you to in the next two or three games yeah or New sessions games? or sessions, sessions. like uh, of an existing campaign whatever that All you right. you do a, a, a hot start like for, for smoking session? hot start and and i think this is in a good example because i think sometimes when you talk about a hot start versus a slow burn you, you mentioned this it's the lead up right so you're yeah, like no you're, yeah can't, Got to get Ooh, everybody in the tavern. Like, uh, this is doing. how you know everybody. You know, the the barkeep comes over, asks you what you want to drink, and then, you know, there's a note that's dropped off at your table, and you read it. But you're, you're saying inject in your current campaign. <clears throat> so next time I get together with my crew here, and I'm running my Axis Mundi game, I can say, okay, what happened last time? Let's go over that. Good, good, good note, good note. Okay, roll for initiative. What? I can well, do it right in the middle of the campaign, right? I can you, just drop you can. that on. You can do it. So this okay, is I like it. this. Yes. So I like it. I like I'm gonna share. I'm gonna kind of help you out trying to get there because I think that's uh, many of us. I would say a majority of us <laughs> tend to go that route. However, think of like the Matrix, man. Right. The beginning yeah. of the Matrix, <laughs> because none of it's like nobody knows what the hell is going on. It's like you're watching a woman get arrested in a dark room yeah with cops with flashlights and then all of a sudden she cl starts climbing walls and you're like <laughs> i i don't think i've ever Whoa. told you this a total segue i knew nothing about that movie neither did I, I. I i literally didn't see a trailer nope nothing i went into that movie theater <laughs> like stone fucking cold <laughs> right and that movie had such a massive impact on me at the time yes because i knew nothing about it it's like I, I didn't actively try to avoid media, you know, like, because sure. there's fucking trailers and people are talking like, whatever, eh, I'm busy going to school, doing my thing. Wham! I talk about a big pie in the face of what the fuck is going on? Right. That was crazy. <laughs> right. That was absolutely bad shit crazy. Yeah. Right. Because <clears throat> I'd never seen it before. I had Flying. no clue what the hell I was walking into. Yeah, man. Is this Flying is across this the freaking buildings, man. <clears throat> yeah. Is this, is this fantasy? What is this? Yeah. Yeah. So, but carry on, carry on, carry on. Sorry. If Don't, if you sorry. take, but at, so that just happens. It's like a very small thing that doesn't yeah. play. I mean, it plays a role in the viewer, but it doesn't play a role in the world necessarily. Like nobody needs to know. Nobody knew she did that, or except for maybe you know the, the crew, right? Yeah, yeah. So my point is, is that if you take and you want to inject something like that into your current campaign. Set like I wouldn't. The players will be going to be like, "What?" So you're in a different room. It's dark. Blah blah blah. And there's this guy who's going to punch you in the face, and that could be a flashback or a foreshadow or whatever. And then maybe they get out of it. They kill the guy. Whatever the case is, and then you fast forward and get him back almost to exactly where you were going to left leave off and run the game anyway. And then you yeah. bring in that bad guy <clears throat> down the road somewhere or whatever. Um, but I, I mean. Or, or 
you know there are clues and things and blah, 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 and story that they have to follow. And then eventually they're going to confront big, bad, evil guy, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get him to the big, big, I had a big, bad, evil guy once. Yeah, I have the big, bad, evil guy. Oh, I've So we've talked about this a little bit, and Colville said it, and we've said it here, like, you know, <clears throat> don't have to hold the big, bad person off to the end. She could show up now. They could absolutely pop up today. You know, players can't defeat them, but I think <clears throat> it would be cool to do that type of thing. Like, have the bad person show up, and they just, they're untouchable. The PCs do everything they can. They just, they they ignore you. They don't kill you because you're beneath them or whatever. Yeah, there's a lot of and it cool things to be done there. It yes. doesn't have to be undefeatable unless, of course, no, I'm, right. That, that, that's a, an angle, an angle. Right, yes. You're right. There's many angles to it. I like what you're saying. I mean, it could just be <clears throat> like... Where did they leave off and where were they going? And you could just speed up the timeline or you could just, um, you know, okay, we're going to go there. And instead of just asking what they're going to do, I think that's the key, right? All right, guys, we left off here. Now what are you guys going to do? And they go, well, we're going to go and check out this place. And you go, okay, you get there, blah, blah, blah. Just, I mean, if you knew, you could just, I mean, even if they are going there, in the yeah. street, roll for initiative. Four guys surround you. Let's let's go. And they're all let's staring at you. Yeah. What are you gonna do now? What are you gonna do? And they're holding knives, swords, whatever, guns, and they're pointing at you. And they want. I mean, it could be kind of cheesy and maybe maybe heavy handed if it was just a mugging. That's you know. Hey, give me your freaking money, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, and uh, I gotta hand it to Running Scared. Running Scared. Have you ever seen that movie, Brett? It's been forever. Gregory Hines, Billy Crystal, buddy yeah. cop movie, awesome. They the guy's aunt dies. They go to the funeral, and then they're walking back to their gar, car, and a guy just pulls around the corner. Guy just walks around the corner, sticks a gun in their face with a paper bag around it, and they're like, "He's like, give me your money, man." And they're like, "What? You're mugging us?" And they're like, <laughs> "Give me your fucking money." And they're like, "All right, we'll give you my wallet and everything, but we just need to keep these badges." <laughs> and it's like. That scene has nothing to do with the entire movie, but they're just walking back from a funeral and a guy's starting to mug two cops. Like, what the fuck? And he runs yeah. away and they're just gonna chase him and yeah, that's that's hilarious. I think the I think one of the pieces that a hot start or even if it's a hot restart, right? Or a hot piece of action in the middle of the of the campaign, right? Okay, that was good, that was a good session. You guys did a lot of researching and so forth in your Cthulhu game. You found a lot of cool stuff. You're back at the mansion. Okay, what are we going to do? Yeah, all right, we're going to sleep on it. Good. That's where we'll leave next session. You wake up and you smell smoke. What? The building is on fire. Right. Holy yeah. what? Because the cultists tracked you back. They lit the building on fire while you slept. That type of... So I love this idea here because instead of thinking hot start, think, you know, hot start not to campaign only, but think hot start to the session right. yes. within the campaign. Right. So I love that. Fuck, I never even thought about that, dude. That's smart. Because the slow burn, I think, is classic. Classic. It, it is tr you, you, a more you, traditional approach, yeah. Very tropey. You, yeah. you start out slow, work your way, work your way, work your way, and then things get crazy. Right. And you can get in a rut with an investigative game, like Trail of Cthulhu, Call of Cthulhu, and some of those, where you look, you look, you look. All right, we go back, we come back, we look, we look, we look, we look. Oh, shit, we got in a fight with some gangsters or cultists. Whew figure that out we look we look oh whoa another fight starting off with the building is on fire because the cult has followed you back i actually have done thinking about that i was thinking hot start campaign but if i think hot start session wise i have when i used to run vampire back in the day we'd start a session and somebody didn't have much happen to him last time so my buddy shannon i love game of shannon because i could beat the crap out of his character and he loved it so thanks people, shannon People would be like, hey, what happened? This, that. Okay, this going on, this going on. Shannon's like, well, I'm going to do this. Well, the first thing you got to do is probably get the wooden stake out of your chest. He's like, what? It's broad daylight, and there's a guy standing on your chest, and he apparently just drove a big piece of timber right be right, right into your left aorta. I'm paralyzed? Yeah. Well, well, what's he doing? He's not killing you. He's just standing over you, laughing at you. Fuck. What? Holy shit. The rest of the table just stops. You know, this is a time when I'm gaming with like 13 players. Everyone stops. What the hell is going on over there? Like, Shan had nothing happen in the last session, and now he's the center of attention. It was a hot piece of action. Just wham, right there. It was a conversation. The bad guy dropped some lore on him, basically. Teased him, threatened him, da-da-da-da-da. And then 
things happen, right? So I have done that, but not on a whole group scale. But that individual, in the way I used to run Vampire, is very LARPy in a way. I think I've talked about that before. So that worked because you're split up across the city. I could do fuck with you in that way. I could mess with you over Dude, here. Dude, throw this over there. everything at all of them all at once yeah. in separate oh, encounters, yeah. man. Yeah. I mean, could that's, totally do that. that's uh, you know, uh, what is that? That's like a, a bad, bad organized crime movie, like Lethal yeah, Weapon. Every, Lethal yeah, Weapon. Every, Lethal Weapon, yeah, man. They, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the South, South Africans come after, you know. Uh, everybody's Mur on fire. Everybody's being shot. Yeah, Everything's Riggs happening. and Murtaugh, man. And yeah. everybody, they're they're coming after all of them at the same time. And yeah, Riggs can be on the beach and Murtaugh's in his house. And they're <laughs> coming matter. after them all at the one single night. Bam. Yeah, one, one night of house cleaning, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think the, the fear of doing it at a campaign level is... I want to make sure everybody's comfortable, happy, do you know, we kind of all in a, are in a groove and then shock your system later. And I honestly think most of the people I play with, the folks of the BSers I've gained with, everyone I've met at a con they've gained with, they can hack it. <laughs> it's it's more of a Brett hang up, I think, than it is a player's hang up. Because I've yet to play with anybody who sat down and said, oh, I just don't, I don't know. Oh, that's a hot start. I got kind of scared about that. <laughs> no one's ever, no one's no. ever said, I'll, I'll play with you, but Session Zero. This I, shit's I just messed up, man. I just want to let you know in Session Zero right now, I, I don't like a hot start. That right. just scares, it scares me too much. <laughs> right. You know, I've, I've never heard that. Now, granted, somebody might say I don't enjoy them as much, or I want to make sure that if we do have a hot start, I do have time to develop my character in personality and stuff afterwards. I think that's been part of the slow burn for me over the years is when I was gaming with my home group or different people, they wanted to understand their character's personality traits and wanted to react a certain way. How does Sean's druid act? You know, does he see Jiminy Jillikers? Does, what does he do when something happens, right? I want to have those moments. And when you thrust the action on him, like, well, I didn't get to develop that. Well, you kind of can right now, right? If Sean Stewart in the middle of it goes, I run. What? You bastard. Are you all, Does he always run away? He always runs away. It's which goes to the earlier lore piece, right? That we talked about from the warden stuff. Is that <laughs> if Sean's like, fuck this, I run. This is dumb. You people, we're getting killed. Let's run. You know, then that becomes a defining moment of your druid. It could change later on as all personality traits of your characters can. But that becomes this piece that you could work with. So I honestly think the hang up of starting a campaign with a hot in the middle of the action one way shape or form is a Brett hang up and not my players. I seriously think they could they could handle it. Yeah. If, if I did it at a con, people are like, oh fucking awesome. We started right off, fucking rolled initiative, Brett killed five five PCs and hand out more characters. That's fucking awesome. It no was metal. Metal. <laughs> exactly. No one would care. Now I think there the upside, of course, to I shouldn't say of course, but an upside is I see it for a slower burn is if you're planning to run a longer campaign, like Call of Cthulhu, my buddy's running uh, Friday, actually, this coming Friday, uh, second session of it is the uh, Horror on the Orient Express. It's a big goddamn, he's got everything for it. And he, this is Lenny, dude. He's the prop master. So this shit. Thing out. Is no new, that thing's like 500 bones. Yeah, we've got like newspaper clippings. We're getting clues and shit dropped on us. Like, what do we do with this? I don't know. Um. We're all going to die. But we we had the first session, which was a lot of, who are you? Meet this person. Meet that person. But there's this weight that that campaign has that says, don't do that. Don't do crazy hot start for this campaign. Right? And I think there is not all campaigns are created equal insofar as the best way, so to say, to get the best bang for buck out of those environments. Now, with Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, I've been reading it a lot lately because I've been healing up and can't do much finding out what minis to buy and reading and busting through the adventure and there are plenty of opportunities for both styles you're walking to the town of you know dugan's hole roll for initiative why two yetis jump the party gets the freaking blizzard yetis hunting the blizzard one yeti this happens orcs attack it absolutely could start that way and then, or you 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 see a fight happening there's somebody in a dog sled trying to fend off and awaken something there's so many options for the hot start and the slow burn. That campaign, as I'm reading it, I don't think would suffer for either type of beginning at all. It would absolutely function both ways. I think Horror on the Orient Express, 
I've not read it, but from what I'm understanding from Lenny and how he's setting it up, and he's a pretty sharp dude. I, I think uh, a hot start on that might be rougher because that's not, it's a little more traditional Call of Cthulhu, <coughs> excuse me, Call of Cthulhu campaign. I think it benefits from the traditional slower burn start. Sean, is there any um, in, uh, I know you haven't done it yet, but what do you think for Forbidden Lands? Do you think that would have a new campaign, new game? We talked a little bit how it matters per game, right? So if you're running, forget about it. You kind of can jump into something. Sure. Because this is so new for you, would you prefer to start a campaign with a new rule system as a slow burn? Or would you prefer to start it hotter than that? I know my answer, but I'm wondering what you're thinking. It doesn't matter to me. Really? Okay. I mean, I, like I said, I have a, a habit of, of doing slow, but with Forbidden Lands, well, Forbidden Lands, I got to get kind of my head wrapped around what that looks like. Be, I mean, it's... So to do that... It's do you not think a Knights Black Agent game, right? Can you, can you get your head wrapped around that? Do you want to do a slow burn start to give time for you and players to get heads wrapped around it? Or just no. say, fuck it, we'll just go in and light it on fire and see what we sort out from the ashes? Well, it also depends on what they're doing and what the results are. Like if they... I mean, if you go into a hex and you legit make your rolls, you're going to see something that's coming. I don't have a problem putting it in front of them. It just depends on whether they see it coming or not. And then some... In that case, it's probably a warm, a warmer start because you're putting them in action versus like, okay, you know, check, check this, what the, what this is. I mean, so I, I think that it can be a hotter start in okay. Forbidden Lands. I don't have a problem withholding that or, hey, they need to learn more we need to get a, adapted to the system a little bit but i don't I, I, that's not a factor and whether i do it or not it just depends on what they're where i i mean the first session would be ideal because they're they're like some of these guys are in the chat room so they're like doo, 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 you know so yeah. <laughs> so, well, so so uh, let me, i mean let me... i could put them in a hex and go all right here's the deal man give me some of these roles scout roles okay great now you see this thing out there and uh you failed your role so now it's on top of you Oh, you made your role, so now you can you see it kind yep. of stalking through the weeds or whatever. So that's cool. I think where my head goes is I normally would think, oh, I want to go slower, man. I really want to milk this, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> however, however, based on our conversation here, the way I the reason I'm doing that is so that I we've talked about this a little bit before in other sessions. Like, okay, I want to make sure in the first session we have like a social interaction check and a this check and eventually get to combat. Well, fuck it, I can just go right to combat. Right. Yeah, because, sure. Yep. Because yeah. brand new, brand new game. Some bar brand new game. I sit down with it. And nobody's run a combat yet until right. I run it for them. Right. That's true. Inclu including me. <laughs> so what the fuck are you waiting for? Let's start a fight right now. Well, but we don't know anything. It doesn't matter. All you know is this dude, this gang has daggers and they're going to kill you. Are you gonna you gonna talk him to death? You want to try a social interaction skill, or do you want to fucking fight? These guys right? aren't here to talk, man. They're not here to talk. You can, how do I know that? Because they already killed the first guy who was in front of you. Bubble what? gum. Oh my God. They're done chewing bubble gum. Yeah, yeah they they all out of bubble gum, and all they can do now is kick ass. That's right. But I think what we're when we're talking about this here, there is there's some definite power to that. Like get right to the action, because if nothing else, in a brand new system. A new combat system. Oh my god, how's this going to function or whatever? Waiting to get to it is like for most gamers, like, oh, there it is. There's there's, there's the thing. Right. I, I know it's coming. It's like, I know what I'm getting you for Christmas, Sean. I'm going to get you this. I'm going to show it to you. This is your Christmas present right here. Isn't it lovely? I'm going to put it over here. You just need to wait five days to get it. Hmm. At a certain point, like, what the fuck? Just give it to dude. Come on. What, what are you dicking around for? You know, just give it to me. Well, that's the funny thing, right? We're playing adventure games, and the adventure like part and might and be. And we're dragging it right? out. Why? Why am I waiting to get to the actual just, adventure? Man, and, credit, it, it, and if fighting isn't the the focus of the game, like Call of Cthulhu, it's like meet the NPCs, deal with the cult, find out something. So, to Lenny, the way Lenny's doing kind of slower burn with uh, the Orient Express game, we're finding stuff out pretty rapidly. Bam, 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 bam. Now, we haven't fought cultists yet, 
but we're spying weirdness. We're seeing strange people. We're seeing <laughs> stuff happen, which is right in the middle. That That's the juicy pieces of Cthulhu, right? Ooh, I don't know what's going on. I want to find out, which is where you get him way the fuck over your head, die, or go crazy, or both. Point being, though, is that in a game, a traditional game like a D&D something or other, if I could just start a fight right away. It, it was the first time I've a runner fight. You know, it's not getting any more or any less first time if you do it now or you do it in two hours in the game. It doesn't matter. The first fight's the first fight. The first skill check roll, the first a- actual impl- implementation of the rule set is still the first, whether you do it at the beginning of the session or halfway through or at the very end. And it fucking matter. So I think I'm talking myself in a little hotter start action, man. I think it... Um, if nothing else for my for my group, it'll be my home group. It'll be a good shot, uh, shocker shakeup for them. Because oh, this is a Brett game. It goes like this, and then if it come in, oh, this is a Brett game. It goes hey, like sh- oh, fuck, it's on fire. Shake it up, Brett. Yeah, shake it good. up. I like it. Might as well shake it up. Twenty twenty one, Brett shakes it up. Brett shakes it up. I'm not in. I don't have the nerve pain I used to. So now I've, I've got no excuses. Right? Brett and his new man bone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, dead man's bone stable in my skin. What can't I That's do? That's right, man. Cool, man. Anything else on this one? Are we good? No. All right, fuck it. Let's move on. All die right. Roll. Get in a die roll. Two to four miscellaneous points of gaming and geekery want to bring to you. What you got? First one, Dragonlance novels. Three of them. Three originals. Like original. Classic. Classic, yes. Weiss and Hickman, not some. Yeah. They're not so are they, editing are they, it. Are, right. they, are, they, are they going to be poorly written, just like the first three? Have they? <laughs> <laughs> Classically poorly I written. Gotta, I mean, I know <laughs> Tracy's written novels. You know? Oh, they all, they both have. I mean, everybody gets better. And, you know, yeah. what you had back. And also, anyway, point is, a joke, joke, joke. But are you interested? I... I'm, I don't know. I might pick them up just for the hell of it and see. It might take me back. Yeah, you know, I, you, Joe Swick, and I were chatting about this the other day, and I'm like, ah, fuck, I don't care. I don't care. I kind of <laughs> care. <laughs> I kind of care. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's the, I'm like, it's like, oh, could you grab my Dragonlance nostalgia any harder than that? Really? I mean, honestly, <clears throat> I don't know. And also, I got this pile of Dragonlance adventures that Sean gifted me. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I think uh, I kind of want I was mad I didn't have all of them. That's kind of sucked. That's okay, but I, I'm i interested. I don't know. Probably shouldn't be, but I am. God damn it. What else we got? Um, Nightfall Games um, announces Terminator RPG. Hmm. With yeah. the whole IP, the, the Terminator IP and all that Man, stuff? Man, I guess. I don't know. That doesn't interest me. In me neither. Interesting. Well, I mean, why not give it another run? Alien had a different RPG ages back too. Back in eighties, nineties, it did. So interesting that that. Yeah, came but there's around. something about the Alien franchise where I think with RPGs and Mothership and some other stuff, and it, no, I, it's got it's got some deep, deep, impactful type of stuff. Yeah. And uh, I don't think Terminator's got it. It's just me. Whatever that is, the thing that made it gameable. I don't know. It was a big chase. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, what else we got? Uh, third one. Let's roll virtual tabletop Kickstarter. Another um, virtual tabletop. God damn, this stuff's coming out of the woodwork. Brother. I know. Great for us, man. It's competition. <laughs> it is. I, yeah, I want. I want count, best of breed. Right. I need more than two breeds <laughs> to choose from. Give me more. Right. It ends twenty five days from this recording, which I thought was March sixth ish. My math is correct. So they had a $9,627 goal, and they've got 128238 It's funded in 17 minutes. Well, it was originally in euros, because I think it's a French org. Well, yeah. Regardless, though, right. it gets, it yes. gets, that's the translation. That's why the weird dollar amount, 9627 yeah. right? Right, right. But the sum bitch was funded in 17 minutes. Their, their wow. video is pretty impressive, I got to say. I talked about this on Saturday a little bit, but you know what it comes down to, in a nutshell, is you take all the virtual tabletops... They all got to do maybe a little bit more than a handful of things, right? They got to display maps, maybe display some tokens, got to have some rule integrations. Interactive character sheets. The character sheets are probably 101. And then the rest is probably 
cherries on top and it's how it's done it's yeah it's, it's the keys. ui it's the, the user interface right which one do you like which one do i like which one do my players and i like together right and how much work do i have <clears throat> to do there's some guys yeah. there's some guys that are like there's the uh the role the other role there's, dude I work, I work in an it group yeah. right and i i know back in the old days uh, you remember burby back when i was a company mm -hmm. we had a guy second floor dude which is where all the brainiacs worked he got upset because his uh, his home created Linux kernel wasn't. He didn't like the print drivers he could find, so he built his own on a Sunday while watching a Packer game because he was bored. Right. That was fun for him. I knew another guy who built you know Oracle clusters in his closet because he wanted to see how the database would perform. Some people love that shit, right. and other people are like, "How come the the box pointy right. don't do the thing?" Right. You know, I mean, there's all the variations to you know. I want to be able to change my own oil, rotate my tires, do all this stuff, change points, do that, all the way to I, I want a button that says go car go, right? And everything in between. And I and I think having more options as we started off this with is is better because you're gonna find your groove somewhere there. Right. Yeah, love it. And then lastly, exodus of uh some major D D uh beyond staff. Uh, so we'll see what happens with those. One of them was Adam, and uh, I think he was one of the principals that sold D and D Beyond to Fandom. So you know there there's some, I mean five four key members, five key members of that staff just left. Three of them, Adam, Lord, three of them all in Todd. one day. Yeah, can't. Yeah, huh. not a big deal maybe, but it. I having been in the. Job movement space always makes me wonder. Uh, uh, rumor is that they got an offer that they couldn't refuse, they couldn't refuse. per Cam Banks. Yep. So we'll see what that looks like. You know, when you have a when you have a really good team, I changed jobs. You yeah. know, three years ago, and I reached out to people within my org that actually work for me now that wanted to work for me. Called them and said, "Hey, I got a spot there. All right, cool, done." And they bailed and came to work for me. Very fortunate that way. And a similar thing could easily happen here because it happens. Right? I mean, um So the the key is to look at their Dar LinkedIn, Darcy, LinkedIn profiles. Yeah. <laughs> but Dar Darcy was working for Monica Games for a long time, having yes, a great time, loved yep. it, and she got scooped up. You know? Yeah, that one surprised stuff. me too. I was like not but expecting it's, to it's, see if that. The if the opportunity is right, it's a better slash different. You don't know. I don't know what's you know, what's up with that crew. You well, know, I'm, I'm curious with Darcy specifically. So, folks that aren't in the know, Darcy Ross, who we, Brett and I have both met. And no, she's awesome. Very, awesome very person. awesome person. Um, got, was working for Monty Cook Games, right? It's kind of an idea. Mm -hmm. She was a researcher at one point, and then she got up to be their community manager and played in a bunch of stuff and partaked in, you know, uh, a lot of their games. And then now she's working for the Critical Role Company. Apparently, is the yeah, and when when she left, Monty and Shauna and everyone, there yeah. was like, she's awesome. Yeah. This is a huge, this is a loss for us, but awesome for her. Yes. So you you don't know how or why, and some of it it could be money, in which case, for God's sure. sake, Darcy, don't tell me none of my goddamn business. Right. If it's just a bet, you know, whatever you tell me, I'll believe you. But I I hope it's turning out right. You just hope it's a good opportunity. Just, and these folks could, and these folks from D and D Beyond could be in the same boat. I just get you into know? recruiter mode and go. Why did you take that job, or why? What led you to that company? But that was part of my that was part of my shtick, man. I would ask, what led you to that company? Were you looking, or did you get? Because the the reason somebody goes to a company tells a lot about their situation at the time. And if they say, "Well, I was looking," then they aren't happy. They weren't happy where they were. And, why? and sometimes you're like, I wasn't looking, but it hit me upside the head. And, I and when go. it wasn't, when it, yeah, it, that's true. I wasn't looking and somebody, but they came to me. So who came to you? Was it, was it your former boss or some and wacky I, recruiter? It, we know Darcy. We don't know Darcy that well. I don't no. think I'm not, I'm not no. asking her that. No. That's not my God. I would, right? I would ask her I, like, Hey, yeah, well, I'm just curious would. how you ended up there because. Which is why Darcy likes me better than you. That's just fair. Just so you know. That's, that's fair. why. Well, and she doesn't have to answer necessarily. <laughs> she can tell me it's none of your goddamn business, and that's okay. Well, what, what I think is funny in in that weird little we all love a doom story, right? Is oh my god, I have seen the thing. D and D Beyond is crumbling. They're gonna die. No. They're gonna fuck everything over. Oh Jesus Christ! I just I just bought this thing. Oh my god! Yeah, get burger, get burger, and light it on fire. For fuck's sake! Brett and I both it know nobody's irreplaceable. 
No, they're not. Nobody's, nobody's <laughs> no, they're irreplaceable. Not. No. Nope. But it is, it's an interesting, di- I mean, it's just an interesting dynamic where, I mean, James Heck, I think, laughed a week ago and then three James, people James, decided yeah. to announce it all on the same day. It looked like James Intercaso hooked up with, you know, MCDM. Yeah, but he, I don't know what he was doing prior. I don't but know if he had a full. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's like, oh, we could do that. I would not be shocked if in two years, after a certain point, James says, you know what? I found a better gig. I'm leaving. Yeah, but what's a better gig? The, so I this is a this is interesting in that what's better for you, whatever, but in a creative space, which RPGs are, it's a niche within a niche. Some of these companies are very small. And D&D in the grand scheme of things is pretty fucking small. Sure. Hasbro's big, but Watsy is small. D&D is even small with it, right? Right. It's it's a small thing. I will top out at a certain point in a multi-billion dollar global company that I work at. That if I really desperately want a promotion to a different higher job, right. I may have to leave the company. That not happens. only leave the company, you may have to leave the city, Brett. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have to be like, oh, sorry, I got to move to Colorado. I need to move to Des Moines. I need to move to France. Who knows, right? That happens. And I think in some of these spaces, the reason I picked on uh, MCDM is like, so James goes there, has a good time. He goes, hey, I'd really like to do this. And Matt's like, I don't have, there's no job progression in some of these jobs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. I, so we're going to bore the fuck. Me, I we're, get it. We're, we're going to bore the fuck out of people. So let's stop talking here. We're <laughs> done. Nobody gives two shits so about this, corporate. The reason we, we're done. The, we're done. So the reason we shared this information this evening is because I want to wish Brett the best of luck oh, wow. as he whoa, goes whoa, whoa, on son to. Son of a bitch. <laughs> As he goes Becky on, filled in once. He filled in once for Brett me. Brett and I had fair. a conversation last week, oh, and he said I'm that he got a better opportunity. He's going to be <laughs> joining. <laughs> He's part of an outplacement. He's we're not renewing his option. You no, dick. No, I figured you got a better opportunity, man. Bigger, bigger money. Uh huh. Yeah, Brett's going to anyway. go and become the podcast for uh, the meat guy. What's his name? <laughs> meat, guy. meat eater. Meat, meat eater. Meat eater. Oh god. Uh, if Stephen Ronella hired me to do that, I would bail on See? you. <laughs> there it is right there, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. If Ronella's like, hey, man, I need you to drop See? that gaming thing. And you're gonna be Him a- and his Vortex Optics hat, man. Don't tell, yeah. don't know what I don't know. I know the deal. Oh, yeah. 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 I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That would do it. That would totally. That would totally. Uh, love you. Bye. <laughs> See? Anyway, let's all close right. this up. All right. We go so, all right. What are we talking about next week, Brad? Next week, we're going to dig into that comment. One of our viewers got us. I think it was Matt. Uh, I was talking about pre-made to homebrew and back, kind of the back and forth, because he was talking about how um, seeing some of the pre-made adventures he's running and how he wants to kind of move into homebrew and to solve some of the quote-unquote problems or things he'd like to change and do different. So we're going to talk about that next session. Next session. Look at me talking gaming. Next, next episode. session. Yeah. Episode. Next session. Yeah. Hot start. Well, you know what? We just, we'll go right to it. We won't even fucking do anything else. we just go right main topic next episode. Boom. Next episode. Boom. Right in there. All right, let's get out of here. Man. All right. So, crazy. hey, Monday nights, 8 o'clock Central Time. Stream here on Twitch. See this on YouTube. Give us a like. Subscribe. Damn it. Smash that like button. Otherwise, you can find the audio version of this at your favorite podcatcher of choice. So, on behalf of Gaming NBS, I'm Sean. And I'm Brett. Good night and good game and all. This, this has been a Litterbox, Litterbox Studio production. production.